today I'm going to go ahead and start talking about what's called oligopoly. And oligopoly is a situation where we have a few firms. And few is pretty vague, but the market is dominated by a few big firms. As I said, pretty vague. So how do we actually measure this? Well, there's two ways that we often measure it. One is what's called the four firm concentration race concentration ratio where we add together the market share of the four largest firms and if the combined market share of the four largest firms is greater than 80%, then that's a pretty high level of concentration. So that's one index that we use. The other is hard to spell, but the Hirschman, and I have to look this up to spell it, Herfindahl index. So for the Hirschman Herfindahl index, what we do is we take all the market shares for all the different firms okay so that's step one we square them so we raise them to the second power. So we might have, say, if we had 10 firms that each had 10% market share, we'd be doing that 10 times. And then add them up. Add those squared market shares up. So if we had a market that was 10 firms, each with 10% market share. Well, 10 squared is 100. And then we would do that 10 times. So we would get a Hirschman Herfindahl index of 1,000. Or if we had two firms that each had 50% market share, then we would have 50 squared plus 50 squared. So that would be 2,500 plus 2,500. So that would be 5,000. And the Justice Department actually uses this metric right here. And their kind of breakpoints that they look at are if it's less than 1,500, then they call that a competitive market. And generally speaking, they're going to allow mergers as long as those mergers will result in this Hirschman Herfindahl index staying below 1500. If it's above 2500, then it's pretty uncompetitive. And it's extremely unlikely that the Justice Department is going to allow a merger if it would cause this index to go over 2500. And then there's this gray area between 1,500 and 2,500 where they're going to look at it and, you know, maybe they'll approve it and maybe they won't. A couple of words of caution when using all these sorts of things, whether the four-firm concentration ratio or the Hirschman-Herfindahl index or anything like that. One is the definition of the market is key. So, for instance, if we were to look at cable, on a nationwide basis it might be that no single cable company has a nationwide huge market share. But that's not really relevant because cable is supplied locally. So we would need to look at a local level where cable is arguably a monopoly. On the other hand, 
it might be that we should not just look at cable as the product, it should be maybe high-speed information services. And so in that case, we would bring in the telecom sector and that kind of thing. And this goes back to this question of whether or not, say for instance, a monopoly is economically meaningful, and we have to look at things like cross-price elasticity of supply to really measure whether or not things are competing products. So definition of the market could be local versus national, and it could be essentially what is the real product, what substitutes are available. The other thing to keep in mind is that it's the market share of sales that matters, not that much the market share of production. So in particular, for instance, um, if we, we went back in time, almost all cars that were made in the United States were made by the big three American automakers. But if other people are able to import cars, then that makes the market more competitive. So the second point here is look at sales, not production. Because production is often concentrated in a particular location, but if, again, if people can sell across borders or something like that, that creates a lot more competition than there otherwise would be. Great.